digital fundraising now more than ever. Hi, I'm Bill Stanjakavich. This is the first day from the fundraising school. And I just want to share some thoughts on digital fundraising. Of course, the need for this practice has been amplified by the pandemic. We saw a slow, gradual increase in more and more activity online in terms of fundraising. And then, of course, the pandemic hits and we need to shelter in place and we need to quarantine. And the only way we can reach our donors is through email and Zoom. And we invented online special events. And now that the pandemic is still with us, but waning, we're seeing you know relaxing of different guidelines and uh, different policies that were in place. What does this mean for digital fundraising moving forward? And the first answer to that question is, we are never going backwards, right? The advance that has happened is here to stay. So what do fundraisers need to know? What skills do we need to develop? First and foremost is mindset. Gone are the days. If you are a digital immigrant, like I am, not a digital native like my kids or our undergraduate students, but if you're a digital immigrant, gone are the days when we can say, you know, digital, that's not my thing. I'm just not into the whole social media. I'm not into you know using these, these online uh, types of techniques. And, and that just has to end uh, because this has been amplified now, the need to be able to raise money online. I think of a story that I read in the national news. It was related to retail and what's happened with online grocery shopping. And the point of the story was that this has now reached all generations. And they told the story of a man who said, you know what, I always enjoyed going to the grocery store. Uh, but because of the health pandemic, I became really concerned about going into the store and I taught myself how to shop for groceries online. And, you know, my local store, they then leave the groceries for me curbside and I just pick them up, put them in my car and go home. I don't have to go into the store. I don't even have to meet anybody. I learned how to pay online. He's 81 years old. And they were using his story to say that, you know, it doesn't matter generationally now. All of us need to be very comfortable online. Uh, we know that our donors are there. We're seeing more and more activity with online donation. Our school came out with a study on crowdfunding. 92% of donors are aware of crowdfunding. At least one third of them are using this practice. And that is um, a, an activity that we expect to grow over time. So what does this mean in practical terms? If we've got that mindset that digital is here, it's here to stay. The big advances have happened and we're not going backwards. First of all, things like the website, the Facebook site, Twitter, Instagram, those are basics. You just have to have those now, right? It's not a, a feature, it's not special, it's expected. And it's how do we use those sites? And we know that people go to social media to be social. So they're often very interested in hearing from people who they already know. So your nonprofit can have those sites. But what we really are seeing is an interest in if your staff members use their social media sites, your board members, when appropriate, your program participants, your donors, your volunteers, giving them content to send out about your nonprofit organization uh, is kind of next level. And then watching engagement. Uh, this, is, this is very significant and has increased uh, during and now after the pandemic in terms of watching who likes our material online, who comments, who shares. That is a new understanding of people who used to come to visit our agency and volunteer at our agency or come to the special event. So if we can have time to analyze that form of engagement, we look and see, well, that person's not a donor. Well, they now can be added into our online email annual fund campaign. Somebody is a donor and they're highly engaged online. That just might be that donor who's inviting us to invite them to make a higher level gift. So it's not just having the social media sites. It's not just the nonprofit sending out the information. We're utilizing the sites of our friends, inviting them to do so, our board members, staff members, and so forth. And it's watching engagement online. And of course, more than ever before is the need for photos and especially videos. Uh, even recording a video on your phone uh, 30 to 45 seconds, mention the person's name up front, mention their name at the end, put something in the middle about their engagement and their impact, done. Post it on an unpublished YouTube site, uh, and then when the recipient receives that link, they're able to access that video. Remember the finding from Google that about 57% of people who see a video about a nonprofit online are likely to donate to that nonprofit organization. So again, 
some simple tips, especially if you're a smaller nonprofit, uh, to be able to make the most of digital fundraising opportunities. Now at a more complex level is this whole question about cryptocurrency. After all, Tom Brady's into crypto. Now, not everybody's into Tom Brady, so maybe that's a good thing or not. Elon Musk is into crypto. Okay, same thing. Not everybody's into Elon Musk. And I'm sure you've seen those funny TV commercials featuring Larry David, right? Where he's the, the grumpy guy who's against any you know, progress whatsoever. So of course he hates crypto, but if he hates it, that means the rest of us should like it, right? So cryptocurrency, this is pioneering. This is the frontier. And I don't think anybody knows the answer for sure if this is a fad or if this is something that's here to stay. So what do we do for the here and now? We need to be informed uh, with, with just the latest knowledge and the latest practice and just watch to see how cryptocurrency plays out over time. One thing that we know is that in the first half of 2022, the value of cryptocurrency has declined by more than one third. Uh, the value of cryptocurrency was around $3 trillion late in 2021 and has dropped under $2 trillion. And that's a trend that is continuing throughout the first half of 2022. There were even larger drops in the publicly traded corporations that uh, oversee and create and transact cryptocurrency. Uh, so again, had a huge run up. Now it's been having a, a huge decline. What do fundraisers need to know? And so you might have donors coming to you saying, would you accept a gift in cryptocurrency? We're not going to tell you what to do. We're not going to prescribe this to you, of course. You need to do what's best with your nonprofit organization. But one option to consider would be to say yes and thank you and to sell the cryptocurrency or the stock in the cryptocurrency company right away, just like we do with a stock, right? That's what we teach is that if you receive a stock gift, we sell it by the next business day. We're not in the stock trading business as nonprofits. The value of the stock might decline over time, so we sell it right away. Same thing with cryptocurrency. And you might be saying to yourself, self, how do I sell cryptocurrency? Fortunately, there are organizations that can do these transactions for you. One of them, for example, is the giving block. You bring your donated cryptocurrency to them, they can cash it out in USD or whatever nation where you reside, your monetary system, and provide you with that, uh, with that cash gift. Now, they're gonna take a couple, three percentage points, no different than your local community foundation when they help you with a planned gift or a donor advised fund or some such thing. And of course, you get to keep the rest. In this way, you're receiving that gift, you're cashing out that gift, it's going right into your annual fund or into your campaign, whatever the case might be. And you don't have to worry about crypto going up, going down. Is it a fad? Is it here to stay? It's the best way in the here and now to consider dealing with these opportunities for cryptocurrency. So once again, digital fundraising has been amplified significantly because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Those advances are here to stay and are only going to continue because technology never goes backwards. And we've responded at the fundraising school with a new certificate in digital fundraising. In fact, just in the last few months, we've awarded our first certificates. You take three classes. Each class is nine hours each. The first class, we admit, is very basic, very elementary. For some of you, you're already there, uh, and it'll be a refresher for you, and you can even share your knowledge with other participants. Second class, more intermediate. Third class uh, is much more deeper, much more uh, high-level learning. You need to take all three to earn that certificate in digital fundraising. And by the way, all three classes only are offered online. See what we did there? Because if you can't take the class online, it's gonna be kind of hard to implement online digital fundraising strategies. This certificate in digital fundraising is just a part of our entire menu of offerings. We have more than 20 public courses. We also have the certificate in fundraising management and the certificate in fundraising leadership and the certificate in nonprofit executive leadership uh, that many of those courses lead up to. Uh, we also have custom training uh, that we can bring directly to your nonprofit, your association, your region. And our public courses and our custom training are available in person, online, online in a recorded format, online in a live format. Uh, whatever meets your learning and training needs, the fundraising school is open for you 24 seven. We have our quarterly webinars and we also have these free podcasts all available on our website at philanthropy.iupui.edu 
forward slash the fundraising school, where you're also going to learn about the brand new fifth edition of Achieving Excellence in Fundraising. This is the signature book that informs the curriculum of the fundraising school. And by being associated with our school, we have a discount price just for you. Again, philanthropy.iupui.edu forward slash the fundraising school. Our producers today are Jennifer Boffman and Mike Anthony. I'm Bill Stanjakevich, and now you are now more fully informed on this first day from the fundraising school. Mm-hmm.